wa Makonde wale toka the Makonde community came from Mozambique into Tanzania they love handwork and they were brought as casual laborers in sisal plantations in Tanzania and Kenya wanachukuliwa manamba kukata makonge Kenya kupitia taita taveta hapo ndo palikuwa ki The Makonde entered Kenya through Taita Taveta in 1936. Upon the change of leadership to President Moy, the Makonde were fired from the Sisal farms on account of being foreigners and had to look for other ways to fend for themselves with difficulties. Sisi ni wazaliwa wa hapa, lakini shida tulizopata hapa ni nyingi. We are born in Kenya, residents of Kenya, but we have faced numerous challenges. During that Moi era, I recall my mother carrying me up a cashew nut tree to hide away from the police at night. Educating a child is a challenge. We have no legitimate documentation to allow them further their studies. I am a football player. I missed a sponsorship opportunity to go to Europe for football because I lacked identification documents. We persevered. Finally, we realized we are at a tight place in life and looked for people to educate us on how to get our rights. We first interacted as a KHRC with the Makonde in 2009 when they were referred to us by our human rights network in Kwale, um, who informed us about their suffering and what they have tried to do with them and other organizations, but it was not bearing fruit. There was a first attempt for registration and we were issued with waiting cards, were promised IDs, we never got. A second attempt, we still didn't get the documents. And it took such a long time that uh, that is when the Makomde community got to KHRC. Lastly, we made a decision that we need to march to Nairobi to meet the president. This was after all constitutional legal processes possible, yet all the institutions mandated with the registration of persons did not assist us. We gathered at Makongeni, led by human rights organizations at the coast region, and we started with prayers, after which we proceeded with the march. We had many options other than the trek that we could have uh, that we could have uh, gone for to, add, to to attract attention to the Makonde people, but uh, we thought a trek was an attractive option because of the difficulties that uh, were clear with regard to the trek. After we got to Kunda from Makongeni, we heard that Mr. Mara was coming. We decided that we would listen to him on our way and continue with our journey. Are you the ones who have mobilized these buses? Is it you? No? Don't be used by NGOs. The decision to demonstrate all the way to Nairobi came from the Makonge community. Did we tell you to trek to Nairobi? When you try to go to the media, they warn us against it and tell us to follow them. When we follow they tell us that all that is needed to acquire identity cards, they already have and they forwarded. And the same is in Nairobi. So the, the many times we were blocked anyway, but we managed to reach to Mombasa. The following day we woke up very early in the morning, of course with so many challenges as well, um, and we started the journey again. This time around we were going from Mombasa to Voi. To Kangia Voi to Pofuka to Padala Land Rover Pale Junction. When we got to Voi, we found a police Land Rover at the junction. Later, the car blocked the road and directed us to enter the Voi police station. They wanted us to surrender the keys of uh, our vehicles. We had about 10, 10, 10 buses, mini buses. But it, one of us picked those keys and those licenses. 
and because we are wearing, we are, all, all of us are wearing red t-shirts, so nobody would know, would identify who was the driver and who was not, who was a, 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 just a, a tracker. Then they told us to stay in our buses and we were like, no, if you are arrested, you are arrested in a police station. So we, everybody came and sat outside on, on Maram, outside the, the police station and everything in that police station just came to a standstill. Our leader finally spoke to the police and we got released. They alleged that they were holding us at the police station for our own safety and so on and asked that we should report back to the police station the following morning. Well, the following day, we woke up and went on our way. I doubt our leader went back to the police. Once we got to Nairobi, there were challenges, despite having begun the demonstrations happily. When we got to Uhuru Park, we were blocked again by many police officers, police who were heavily armed. Due to our unity and solidarity by our brave human rights leaders, we did not fear. They informed us that this was normal. They informed us that this was normal and that we had followed all the legal procedures in fighting for our rights. We have a message for the president. Is that a problem? Now, so, and then our request is very simple. You escort us, we deliver the message to the president, we'll be peaceful. We've got a, you see, you see, the, the, you see the people we're carrying? They, they, they are elderly. We are aware of that fact. Nothing must go wrong. You want us to agree? Yes. You want us to talk? Yes. the road. We have our dialogue we have, here. We have cleared the road. We, 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 have, to clear the road. we have cleared the road. We are still on the road. You can see. Uh, as you Mr. can see. Katam, Mr. As you can Katam, see, we are... We are we, uh, Mr. Katam, we are talking in good faith. All of a sudden, we saw the cabinet secretary for interior. So a group is already engaging the police on the other side. Then you see the cabinet secretary. Then he came and um, the first instinct for our executive director was to engage him and ask him, why would you send people to beat these people up? And he was like, I'm not here for war. I'm here to receive my people. You have reached Nairobi. You can't go back without seeing the president. I have been sent by the president to come and pick you and take you to State House. With all the turmoil we face from Kwali to the point we have reached and being told we will be able to meet with the president, at least the cries of our brothers who we live with, our brothers who have married our sisters, whom we have also been married at their places, be heard. It was a complete disconnect, a complete, a complete disconnect in terms of 30 minutes ago you are saying that we are not allowed to state house. After a few minutes, seconds, then we are allowed to state house. But from that moment we went to state house, those security apparatus that were meant to barricade us, that actually transformed to become our, our, our convoy, right? It, <laughs> it became our convoy to, to state house. We have been told how you have walked from coast, Mombasa. Kwale, until you reached here. Mine is to ask for forgiveness because it has taken a long time to reach the point of doing justice to you as our fellow Kenyans. They made us forget all the pain. Therefore, we are grateful and are happy that we are Kenyan citizens. 
The, the total number of uh, registered citizens were 1,580. At that particular time, the one we gave uh, citizenship, um, 1,580. Out of that, um, 1,250 got IDs, didn't cut, so they're able, they're capable, they are free to vote, they are free now to exercise their democratic right. The role of civil society uh, has been, to me, uh, remarkable. It is a civil society which actually has sensitized the government to realize the plight of these individuals, of these communities, and they are the ones who actually pushed the government to uh, do the vetting, uh, especially uh, the Kenya Human Rights uh, Organization. Uh, uh, they, 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 they've been, they've been the, the forefront in, in ensuring that these people get their rights. The fact that the Makonde got citizenship is actually the beginning uh, rather than the end of their struggle. We have more work to be done around them awareness creation, empowerment, so that now, with time, they can also be part of the mainstream when it comes to governance and the development processes in the country. We have uh, uh, legislation that needs to continually improve. For instance, this year we are working on the identification and registration of persons bill, which needs to encompass everybody in the country and recognize what kind of documents each person is uh, entitled to as long as they are within the borders of Kenya. I am happy at this time for getting an identity card. I travel anywhere and I am known to be a Kenyan citizen. <laughs> the happiness I feel I cannot put into words. <laughs> Even though I do not have anything, at least I have got an identity card. You feel like just breathing. <sighs> you breathe well now. I am Kenyan. I am happy to get my identity card. I have got my rights and I will succeed because I am a winner. <laughs>